What cringy things did you do as a teen? I spent most of my time in class making arm bandages out of masking tape. When I was finished. I'd write used and my chemical romance lyrics on them. I'd also sit under my desk sometimes. At the time. I was getting tested for a brain tumor and all the teachers had been informed. So they just kind of let me do whatever. Edit. I didn't have a tumor. Happily. It was just a cocktail of neurological issues that looked an awful lot like a tumor when they all appeared at once. I once literally wrote the word trouble all over me with a sharpie and took a shirtless pic to post to MySpace. I was like a super skinny emo kid. Oh god. Why did you remind me of this? Figured out my life. At 16. I got a part time job bagging groceries. I had a girlfriend. I didn't need anything else my life. I could support Heather and myself on my 9 hours a week, and I'm pretty sure, under minimum wage job. FCK school. A real thing I said to my mom was. You don't understand love. She had been married to my dad for 20 plus years up to this point, what Heather and I have is real. My edgy scene kid my space name was Cletesaurus WRECKZ. I was 15 and had not yet gotten the message that absolutely nobody wanted their clit to be wrecked. Dear lord. I had a big crush on a scene girl when I was a junior. So I bought bright white skinny jeans to try and impress her. She called me MR. Clean. I was a neckbird. Nice guy. White knight. Used to write love poems and do the whole M lady thing when speaking with a girl I was interested in. I used to protect the honor of girls I fancied by threatening their boyfriends with harm if they ever treated them wrong. 15 plus years ago and I still cringe hard when my friends make fun of me about it. My whole body just contracted itself into a ball. Hug where to even start man. I would take angsty. Really awful photos and post them online and call myself a photographer. It was my art. One photo I remember in particular was of an old candle I had found. I poured sparkly red nail polish on it that was supposed to be blood and stuck a bunch of razors in it. It was a reflection of my tortured 13 year old soul. Oh my god I took this exactly picture. Also red nail polish dripping down a white candle. Cause I was so pure. But anguished inside. Why did you remind me? So many things. I used to take black and white photos for my MySpace page with half my face covered in some way because insecurities. Then to top it off I'd put my chemical romance lyrics on every picture to show how deep I was. Super cringy. Teenagers scare the living shti out of me. In secondary school about halfway through. I thought it would be genius to pretend I was American. I'm from London. And had known some of these people from primary school. I would go around teaching people how we American people talk. So if someone said something British. I. Rubbish. Holiday. Pavement. I'd get firmly on my horse and say um. It's actually garbage. Vacation. Sidewalk and saunter off. I hate myself. Meanwhile across the ocean. Me at 13 made my GF sit through the entire Linkin Park. Hybrid theory album to explain why we couldn't be together anymore. Me. At 12. Decided to be a part of the school talent contest. I thought it would be entirely appropriate to do Steve Allen's version of Donna Summer's Hot Stuff, where he reads the lyrics. You know. Because a 12 year old girl can totally pull off a NSFW comedy routine done by a middle aged man. I was at a sleepover from a girl I had a crush on when I was 14. After that sleepover she wanted to go shopping with some of her friends. That also stayed the night. I asked if I could accompany them. They were clearly trying to tell me they didn't want me to accompany them. But I didn't get the hints. In the end. They ran away as fast as they could. Pretending to run to get the bus. At first I tried to follow them. But then I finally understood and stopped midway. Asking myself how stupid I could be. Edit. Removed some comata. 2. Edit. To clarify some things. Me and the girl were really good friends and I wasn't the only guy at the sleepover. 
But I would have been the only guy going shopping with her and two other girls. Pierced my eyebrow with a safety pin. Yeep. Tried to do my lip with a safety pin. Got it halfway through the skin and realized two things. 1. Skin is a lot harder to puncture than I thought and. 2. I spoke with an American accent. I'm British. I'm American and live in America. We had a new student show up one year. Cool dude. Whatever. No one knew where he was from. Because he spoke in an American accent so we never thought anything of it until one time we were standing in line and he goes is this where the queue starts? And we were like. The what? The what now? As it turns out. He was from London and had been faking an American accent the whole year. Idiotic. Really. Because girls love a British accent. His love life really picked up after he dropped the act. In 9th grade. I carried around Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace just to look smart. Didn't make it through the first 100 pages. Was at a birthday party and had to pee. Decided to step toward the edge of the woods and let it flow. Then heard a scream. Peed on my girlfriend's best friend while she hid during a game of hide and seek. Interesting relationship after that. Found you. Now it's my turn to hide. Jeff I don't wanna play hide and go pee anymore. It's weird. I read the book Peeps by Scott Westerfeld in like 6th grade and in the book the main character put a rubber band on his wrist and snapped it whenever he had a S or a desire. In an attempt to eradicate the urge. 12 year old me decided to try the same and whenever I was around my crush. I would snap my rubber band. Hoping that they had read the book and would realize that by me snapping my band I was trying to tell him that I liked him. Thinking back. I probably looked like an idiotic pre-teen that likes inflicting minuscule amounts of pain upon herself. Got really into vampires. To the point where I used to pretend I was one. In school I thought I was so cool and edgy when I asked people what blood type they were. FCK I wish I could punch younger me. Edit. This blew up much more than I expected. I cringe even more than I planned to. But I only have myself to blame I guess. Poor younger me. The same shti my two teenagers are currently doing. That's right folks. You have to experience it all again. It's a cringe fest. My oldest. Turning 12 in a few months. Is in a Brinny Sonic TF2 phase. Several days ago he played an angsty Brinny song about depression at top volume for 2 hours because his sister refused to speak to him. I'm just over here quietly screaming and wondering how I could have possibly prevented this. Aside from never ever ever showing him the internet. Wear my hair over my eyes. Raccoon eye makeup. My middle nephew did this thing with his hair where he'd wear it over his eyes. Then flip it out of the way of his eyes. Then immediately shake his head so the hair was back in his eyes. Oddest f Kim thing to watch someone do voluntarily. Take pictures of me working out with cheap ass shades on. And then send it to girls who asked for a pic on Yahoo chat. I was scrawny f too. Those girls were all old skeezy dudes. I was basically a decent collection of our Nisegulais and our Lirong generation material. I was one of those guys who unironically whined about the friend zone and how girls don't like me because I'm too nice to them even though I was obnoxious. Clingy. Immature. And had no sense of self confidence or awareness. On top of that. I also had one of those I'm such a classy gentleman because I don't drink or party. I only listen to good music complexes. In reality at the time I listened to mainstream classic rock. And just barely entry level indie music. Also. The only reason I didn't drink party is because my parents were strict. And so I created a sort of superiority complex to justify it to myself. Fox and grapes type mentality. The truth is I spent a lot of time being bitter and trying to put myself on some pedestal. When in reality most of the people I went to high school with were really cool people. And had I just chilled and learned to be myself and let others be themselves. I probably would have had a much better time. In elementary school I was in love with a boy in my class. I didn't dare to say a thing to him. So instead. 
I kicked him in the crotch with full power and without warning. That got his attention. Edit. Apparently a lot of redditors were kicked in the balls in grade school. Crushed so hard I did a tattoo of his initials on my palm. Which consisted of putting ink on a piece of cotton and threading it through the top layer of skin. Seen hair. But I was too lazy to actually style it so it just looked like bad anime hair. To be fair. That's just what seen hair looks like. I was so obnoxious and claimed that I was so different and that no one could understand me. Oh and I would also say things like I'm not like the other girls. I don't like having girlfriends there's always too much drama while being queen of the drama queens myself. Only wore black and neon pink clothes. Let him think about bright neon pink pants and a t-shirt with feathers round the edges. Oh yeah and I called myself a fairy. Even made big fairy wings that I actually wore on the street. OMG I'm so cringing right now just thinking about it. My parents let me do it because they thought it would be funny to remind me of this later when I grew out of the phase. Of course at the time I'd be like but moo it's not a farce I'm a fairy that's who I am. God if I could go back in time I'd punch myself in the face at her. As a preteen. I would stand with the mannequins in the front of shop windows and pose like them. I thought no one could tell that I was real. I read my teenage diaries recently. The narcissism was off. The charts. I genuinely was convinced I was so bloody clever and no one could ever understand the complexity of my thoughts. What rubbish. I let a dude pee on my foot at a party because I thought it would make me look cool and aloof. I was just Noah's pissy foot girl until I blessedly moved far. Far away. Hey. It's that cool and aloof girl who lets guys piss on her feet. Used to sneak around school to spy on all the boys I had crushes on. I eventually grew out of this phase. But occasionally catch myself spying on my husband because he's a cutie. As a mixed person raised by my white family. My entire life has been an identity crisis. I went through every kind of phase in the book. Emo phase. I would wear as many bracelets and I could fit on both arms. I looked crazy but refused to believe it. I also wore a very very bad combova and everyone told me it was bad but I didn't believe it. Country phase. I wore cowboy boots 5 sizes too small to fit in. And pretended to be obsessed with Tim McGraw to the point my mom bought me concert tickets. We are buffets. I knew nothing about anime but made POC registered sign mon noises randomly. And I only knew 3 POC registered sign mon at the time. Pikachu. Blossom. And Sherizard. Girly girl phase. Wore a headband with a bow on it every day and only ballet flats with crew cut white socks because that all my mom would buy me. 90s phase. Somewhere around 17 years old, I was only born in 97, I ripped up every single piece of clothing I owned and put holes in it for no reason. Edit. Great idea. Relative. So. I'll bet you two love birds meat. Me. Online. After we realized that we both used to cover candles in red nail polish to symbolize fake blood. I was super weeaboo in middle early high school. I'm still really into anime but now I don't refer to myself in first person adding chan at the end. Or run like Naruto characters. The weeaboo faded around junior year high school into a normal person who liked anime. But the worst was this massive binder me and my friends had of Naruto pictures and comics. We had a bio page for each character including their stats. Age. Birth date. Then we had comics where we would add our own little comments and responses. Looking back it was cringy but at the same time that binder was super fking organized and well managed by a bunch of 13 year olds. I think we put more effort into that binder than we ever did any of our school projects. Seeing how I'm still a teenager these are all LPTs for me. LPT. Don't do anything. Like. Nothing. At all. I had a set of decorative swords. So. I'd go about my room pretending to fight someone as if I was in a movie or some shti lol. I'm just glad I never got caught haha. 
I was one of those early on generation kids who thought I was superior for listening to classic rock and prog rock metal. And that modern music was all shitty and not real music. I'm not exactly proud of that phase. I can't believe I'm posting this, but I used to buy those cans of spray hair dye, specifically blue. Gel my hair on the sides to form two horns and then apply the hair dye. I did this until about junior year when the school administrator called my house. They were complaining about the smell of the dye and how I'd always run through the halls making a who 0000 wash sound. I was pale and wore baby powder as face powder. Thus adding to my lack of color. Live vicariously through my classmates. To the point that I never had any really relationships because I felt like I wasn't capable of handling them. Instead I manipulated classmates I was attracted to into getting into relationships with each other so I could vicariously experience the relationships from both sides. I haven't spoken to anyone from high school in years and if I ever run into any of my old classmates I likely have a lot of apologies to make. Though to be fair if that's how I was at the time. Then I probably really was in no way ready for a relationship. Real world sims. I didn't wash enough. And smelt too much. Okay. Ages 12-14 I was a. Weeaboo. Furry. A nice guy. An incel. Didn't exist then. But if it did I would be a subscriber to it. Comma. A neckbird. And I claimed I was B. I wish none of that happened. Ooh oh, buddy. First GF. Making out in her bed. A young lad ripe with lust. I'm on top of her. Most likely no idea what I am doing. Fast forward. Father enters the room. He clearly sees everything. In my fear and entrained response I jolt off of her. Towards the foot of the bed. In the moment I must have been completely mindless as I grabbed the remote off the dresser and began to stare at it. As if that was what I was doing the entire time. Just staring at a TV remote. Her father witnessed every moment of this. My girlfriend Joseph King stared at me in disbelief. The father. Who was a super cool dude. Didn't even care that we were making out. But just shook his head and walked out. I think about this way too often. And feel the cringe deep within my soul. I don't know why I did it. Why it happened. FCK. I am cringing right now I got it's horrible. I had a emo scene phase. Oh tons of stuff. I have heavy into Japanese culture, Marizo than anime, and was very depressed. The first thing that comes to mind is my kimono phase. I wore an authentic silk kimono to school to celebrate special occasions like my birthday. Good news. Etc. Whenever I suffered a loss like breaking up with a boyfriend. I would cut my hair to emulate ancient Asian culture and start anew. I collected soda can tabs to make myself a choker necklace. I also had a dog collar I'd wear. I had a self mutilation phase where I would cut the names of my exes into my arms. This is my cringiest. I often wondered why I was treated like a freak. So I acted more and more like one then cried then I was treated so differently. I wish I could go back and explain it to 15 year old me. I tried to be really edgy. Like I didn't wear edgy clothes but the moment I started taking you'd know. Probably really cryptic. Edgy MSN screen names. Thought it was cool at the time. Now I know better. A. Os. Entilda Entilda. Osn't I copyright to gloss. Entilda Entilda. Wore a dog collar. Don't be so rough on yourself. One that I totally blocked from my memory and didn't remember until my parents retired so I was cleaning out my room, was how many times I changed my name. What I mean is I would write on school assignments stuff like you and Ramida 321i, because I was the first. Comma and miss you and Ramida 321 of Pittsburgh. PA. USA. Solar System. Iran Arm. Milky Way Galaxy. The Universe. I'm pretty sure a lot of them were all inspired by characters and books. The oddest streak was when I got my ham radio call sign when I was 16 you need to pass a test to get the license and call sign. 
which I was proud of. But did I really need to add my call sign to everything for several months? I was also interested to notice not one teacher ever commented on this on all the papers I found. Leaving me to wonder if they were exceptionally respectful of my odd identity crisis or this is just common teenager behavior to do. My profile picture of my social media when I was 13. Was me using a t-shirt and a headband and crossing kitchen knives as a rex in front of me like I was a badass ninja warrior. There was that time with the Wiccan phase. Read out loud poetry shudders not my finest. And leaving an anonymous note on a guy's backpack with. Guess what? A poem. Ugbita. Spins to me cringes every time I get flashbacks. Fast forward 10 years after some of the dudes that mocked me think I'm hot. They're still assholes and I'll be damned to go out with any of them. Mostly because of my awkward poem thingy. Edit. Grammar. I wrote it remembering all the cringe it caused in me ha ha ha.